Hello and welcome to the third episode of the new series from Opera Vision, Next Generation. I'm Nina Brazier, a stage director based in Frankfurt, and over the coming months I'm taking you to four young artist programmes across Europe, exploring how the opera world is developing and nurturing the next generation of talent. Starting in Rome with Opera for Peace's inaugural Opera Academy, and on to the Academia Rossiniana Alberto Zedda at the Rossini Opera Festival. Then I'll welcome you to my operatic home, Oper Frankfurt, and our opera studio, before we head west across the Mediterranean to Valencia in Spain, home of the Palau de les Arts and their Centre de Perfectionnement. With backstage access to masterclasses, concerts, rehearsal rooms and dressing rooms, we'll find out how the singers negotiate the physical and emotional highs and lows as they explore their unique operatic voice. Today we're off to the Rossini Opera Festival's Accademia Rossiniana Alberto Zeta. The young singers start their programme with seminars on theory and an intensive course in vocal interpretation of Rossini. As part of this, they have a masterclass with the renowned director Rosetta Cucchi who we'll also be hearing from. The programme culminates with a fully staged production of Il Viaggio a Rems. I'm curious to find out what expectations the singers have of the programme, what challenges they face along the way, and what demands Rossini makes of the voice that is different from other composers. And I want to know what the young artists will take away with them as their time in Pesaro draws to a close. Let's hear a word from the singers we're going to be following. It is sometimes important to see what other people do, so you can steal from them <laughs> basically a little bit. But of course that helps to see what the Rossini style is about. At home I didn't hear any opera, any classical music. My father likes Colombian music and my mother listened to rock or something, but opera, never, never, never in my life. I started to work in FedEx. I was delivering packages, then I was delivering pizzas, and then I finished working in the uh, Polish embassy, actually, but this is a, a long story. In three years, I, you know, but... I was working all the time and every day after the work, I was going to the school. It was like a afternoon, evening school. Uh, so it was pretty hard, you know. You have to learn also how much your body can take. I see colleagues here that can take a lot on professionally and then socially. And me, myself, for example, I, I realize I can't. Uh, that we are just different person. So... Sometimes I wish I wish I had more stamina to do all of them, but also I think it's very important to know when to rest. I will always remember the last singer arrived was a, a soprano that was bringing with her uh, Gilda from Rigoletto. And I had no idea the tempos of Gilda, nothing. So I started to run with the piano. Umpla, 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 ta, 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 ta. So the singer were so white on face. <laughs> Rosetta Kuki, the director, pianist and artistic director of Wexford Festival. More from her coming up later. I met four of the young singers in the bustling offices of the Rossini Opera Festival at the Palazzo Gradari in Pesaro, starting with a young Spanish soprano. So my name is Aitana Sanz. I'm from Valencia, from Spain. And I've arrived here to Pesaro with the main role learned from Contessa di Folville, which is the one I will be performing on the first day of performances. And then I will also be making Modestina. What does the Accademia Rossiniana have to offer that's perhaps different from these other programs? Well, this is actually very, very different because the other places I've studied in, it doesn't have like a specific purpose for the time you're there. Here instead is one month and a half, uh, specifically two weeks of academia and then the rest of the time to prepare one production. So it's very specific because you're working 
everything on the own one style one person and that's Rossini and, and his Belcanto. So it's definitely different. So my name is Stefan Astakov and uh, I'm currently taking part in the uh, Academia Rossiniana in Pesaro. I wanted to see how I can develop myself and to try myself more in uh, Rossini music. And uh, that has, uh, the Young Artist Program here has really helped me to see what can be done differently from the other composers. And uh, yeah, this was my big expectation to experience how to actually do it correctly. Now, I know that you yourself have musical parents. Are the expectations very high from them or the wider operatic community about you and your career? I'm trying not to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> That's probably so, the best way. It's better not to think uh, about such things and uh, not to put pressure on yourself even more and just to relax and enjoy Rossini. Janusz Nosek is the Polish baritone whom we first heard from in episode one. I asked him what his goals were when he first arrived at the Academia. First, the goal was for me to to get the, the debut in the Rossini Opera Festival, which is which is actually one of the most important festivals all over the, the world. You know, debuting in such an important festival in such a young age, uh, for me, it's... Um, this is already a, a goal, you know, because in uh, such a young age, uh, it's not really easy to get a job on a professional contract uh, in the theater. <laughs> Of course, to debut as a young artist at the Rossini Opera Festival is a goal in itself. But for one of the young artists, getting onto the programme in the first place was fraught with difficulty. I'm Paola Leguizamon, <laughs> a mezzo-soprano from Colombia, living in Madrid, uh, studying in the Reina Sofia School of Music. I know that uh, like three years ago, uh, the, the year of the pandemic, I was in Colombia and I, and I wanted to travel here to, to make the audition. Uh, but it was impossible because it was it, it was uh, just in March when the pandemic began. Uh, so I sent my video and they told me that, OK, come to the live audition. And it was impossible. So that was sort of COVID time. Did you then have to reapply this time round? Yes, I came and I did a live aud audition, but I, I didn't. You didn't get onto the program? Yes. Yeah. But at the end, in July, one of the girls who come to the, the Academia got COVID. Oh, wow. And uh, they called me and because I was in the waiting list and I couldn't come. Oh. <laughs> I had a lot of things to do, um, familiar things, because my, my grandmom passed away. And then, well, it was better for me because, you know, you have to do your your own life a part of the the opera world that that takes a, a lot of time of, of your your entire life and then this year I came and I did a live audition and and well it, it is my year my normal year that I, I can really have the time not just the time and the, um, the concentration Director Rosetta Kuki and I caught up after the Rossini Opera Festival and her glorious production of Otello I wanted to learn more about her masterclass at the Academia this summer. I am in my house, in my studio, in Pesaro, because believe it or not, my hometown is Pesaro. So this is a, a, a dream when you can work in your town and go to the theatre by bike. 
Now, I know that aside from directing your wonderful production of Otello at the Rossini Opera Festival this summer, you took the time for a masterclass with young artists at the Accademia Rossiniana, and your special session was on the path between voice and interpretation. Now, this, I know, is something so fundamental to young artists. How do you begin working on this subject with the young singers? I mean, in my opinion, uh, to mix and to match uh, your body language to your voice is extremely important, especially for a singer today. So, as you know, I am a musician and I am a director. So I took advantage of this to start, uh, let's say, a path of... um, teaching them or anyway working with them in what is the voice together with the body. Your body is not only an optional thing that comes with you when you sing. Your body, your interpretation, your body language, but not only the body language, what you are thinking of your character, of uh, the mix between uh, the sound and the character that you are interpreting is mainly important. Today a day, I think that uh, the opera theater is becoming really a theatrical stage for singers. So young singers, that they are passionate, that they are fantastic. I, I enjoyed so much to do this master. It was short, but it was full of passion. I think that they really received from this what is the meaning of being an artist, not or being only a singer. You have experienced a vast number of auditions through the course of your career. But what does for you make a really standout audition? What are you looking for in that room? I wanted to say about audition that uh, is one of the most difficult thing for an artist, for any artist. But uh, for me, it's mainly important to explain and to teach to the young singers or to the young musicians how to do an audition. There are little things that everyone needs to know. As I say, it's not only the voice, is how you put yourself in front of a judge, how you feel inside yourself in front of a judge, and what is really make you stand up and say, this is the one. It's not only the voice or is the attitude, is what they deliver to you. In the same moment, the humble and the security make the person that is in front of you the right person for, uh, for being uh, hired for a theatre. But what about Rossini and the demands he makes of the singers? Here's the Russian baritone Stefan. There is a lot of humor in his music and... Uh... Sometimes you listen to some older recordings or uh, so to live performances here, you realize of uh, how much different and how much closer it is to actual actors speaking just with each other. Uh, this is what makes it great also. <laughs> asked Aitana about the specific demands of the repertoire. What is Rossini demanding of your voice that no other composer is asking for? I think it demands, it demands everything. Uh, I actually never thought I could be singing Rossini because 
Uh, even though my voice sounds like so natural and it all came so easily, coloratura didn't, uh, especially at the beginning. And I I struggled with coloratura, and then it was now that I I, I now I feel confident with it. But still, here is where you take it to the maximum level. So that's to me the the highest part on it but then you also learn that you can approach it in different ways because we are not everybody the same person and you see one person going to full speed with it or with one technique and then the other with total different one and both works for paula good technique is essential i think my voice fits very good in rossini repertoire but at the same time, I think Rossini is the most difficult composer to sing. But I, I know that my voice fits. That's the problem. <laughs> because mm, I think not um, all the people uh, born with the coloraturas, with the agility. And also you can improve that. But at the same time, you you born with, with that... Um, easy way to, to do that thing. That's why I say my voice fits on that. But preparing a Rossini role demands a lot, a lot of time because of the agility, because of you have to take care of one note uh, and the, then the second note and the, this passaggio and because it's, I don't know. No, for me it's, it's so, so difficult technically. For Rosetta Kuki, singers have to really embody Rossini's characters. Rossini has, of course, so many very specific demands of his performers. And I'm wondering, what would you say for the young singers on this programme? What are the main challenges of singing Rossini in particular? Well, uh, Rossini demand to be an acrobat, of course. <laughs> because, uh, of course, the agilità uh, and, at the same time, the legato. And Rossini is a kind of um, rational craziness. And in this rational craziness, there is everything. There is a, a, an entire world to interpret, to sing, to move, to deliver. But in the same time, Rossini give you the freedom to open your mind and to live your character and uh, um, taste your character, maybe much more than other composers. I was curious to find out how the young artists are developing over their time in Pesaro. Here's Stefan again. When we were uh, working uh, during the academia part of the program, we had several uh, maestros coming to us. Uh, and of course, Maestro Palacio was also working with us. And uh, we had to bring two arias and two duets with us, uh, apart from the material of Il Viaggio Reims. And we regularly performed these arias to some different singers or coaches or maestros and every time we learn something new it is a complete package so of, of everything technique uh, interpretation and of course the pronunciation Aitana explained how her approach to character is developing what would you say is perhaps the most important thing you've learned here in your time in Pesaro well I think I've learned a lot about myself which maybe is not on the <laughs> schedule <laughs> to learn, <laughs> but because it's so intense, then you get here and 
you're not on your own really anymore. You're all the time with people, all the time watching your colleagues, uh, learning from them, seeing kind of lots of things. And of course, that, that has an impact on you. So that's, I think I have learned a lot to, to deal with all these situations with with my thoughts my pressure my own pressure that I put on myself and so I've learned resilience um, to that I I actually need a lot of time for myself and carefully choose the the time I spend with with the people so in order to fully enjoy it and not feel like oh my gosh, I, 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 I'm a bit overloaded and I, I, I wish I was resting somehow. So that's important. I've learned, yeah, that the, whatever the, the time I'm spending with or without people, that it should be quality, quality time. In a world where work and social life is often so intricately intertwined, Aitana takes a really well-balanced approach. So what about the real struggles and challenges the young artists have faced at the Academia? In episode one, we heard how Janusz got COVID right at the start of the programme. How did that pan out? So I was isolated for seven days, but I arrived to the Academy on Tuesday uh, a week later. Yeah, what a shame after you all know, that build-up. Yes, you know, I, I arrived, you know, and I didn't know all the people, you know, and it was a bit a bit difficult at the beginning because you know after a week of COVID, especially it was the second COVID this year, because I I, I got COVID in February uh, just just before the audition in Genova. This that's, is becoming a tradition with you. Every I think time. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think every audition, you know, I I have to get something, and um, you know, I. I arriving here, having just a few days left for the concert, final concert of the Academy, then to decide what role I could sing in Via Reims. Mm, it was a bit, you know, tough because they asked me to sing all the, 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 the parts, um, no, the most important parts from the roles that they, they asked me to, to, to study. In a few days, you know, I was feeling tired, you know, after COVID, you know, it, it is tiring and uh, the voice needs some time to, to, to come back. So it was very stressful because I was like, okay, let's hope that I will got anything, anything to sing, you know, in the, in the opera, because I thought that maybe I, I will be not able. In the production of Il Viaggio a Rems, each singer takes on one role and another role or chorus in the alternate cast. I asked Aitana if the double casting was a big challenge. It's more organized that one day is one cast and the other day is the other. So that's helpful because otherwise your brain can a bit go mad. Yeah. But because my two characters are very linked and also you want to also check on the other person because you know the role and you care for, in my case, I, I really care about Ines Lorenz, who is the other Contessa. So also care and also learn from her so you're paying attention to that but then don't forget you are not her anymore you are your person so i don't know if i have a trick for that paula faced a more practical challenge the first thing uh, was uh found a place for living <laughs> because pizarro is so expensive in the summer then try to find time to study and also to be to be in the rehearsals and also to I don't know to cook to eat to because um, we had a lot a lot of things in the academia. Even the most experienced professionals have faced challenges. Rosetta will never forget her early experience as an accompanist at the festival. Nobody taught me anything about. Uh, traditions uh, about uh, how to accompany a singer. So I had to, to do by myself somehow. And uh, I tell you something, this is very, very funny. Uh, I, I was really young and uh, the former artistic director of Pesaro, which was Luigi Ferrari, he asked me to come in Pesaro. He didn't know that I was from Pesaro. 
And uh, the first time I approached an audition playing the piano, I was in, uh, on the, on the, in the Teatro Rossini and I w- 200 singers arrived and I didn't know any repertoire of opera. So I was desperate. I was curious about young artists looking to the future and taking on leadership roles, especially women. Another question for Rosetta. What do you think is important for women or people who identify as women or non-binary to do to become leaders in this opera world, which, as we know, is incredibly difficult for us? You're right, Dina, it is incredibly difficult. (laughs) Um, Not because this is a a world of men, but because uh, uh, the challenge for a woman is always bigger. And the advice that I can give, and which was, uh, let's say, my line in my life, is to believe in yourself, to really believe in yourself, and to not compare other person, other gender. No, believe that uh, you want to do something and be professional and serious to approach any kind of career. My life has been a series of sliding doors. Uh, I started in the orchestra and then the orchestra closed. Then I started as a repetitor. And then um, being a, 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 having done the university in theatre, my, let's say, my eye was on stage. And I started from zero another career, which was even more difficult for a woman and for a woman that changed channel somehow. And then again, the artistic direction, um, it was a a long um, series of uh, choices done with uh, uh, intellectual honesty. And that is what for me is important, the intellectual honesty, to know what you want, what you can do, what are your skills, and then with humble going onwards. So what will the young singers take away with them after their Academia experience? Here's Janusz. Here in this Academy, I have to say that uh, I think I will take with me back the um, ability to be more elastic because it, it happens. It happens really often in the opera business that, I don't know, someone calls you Hey, can you tomorrow be here? So I learned here how to be flexible. Yes, flexible maybe it's a better word. And how to react and how to act in a, in a situation when, when it can change really fast. The one, the one thing that I will take with me for the future, for me, in my mind, in my, in my skills, it's the, the flexibility. Because it showed me <laughs> that everything can change you know, on the last, on the last moments. Paola summed it up in a sentence. I went to the um, uh, Rossini Opera Festival and, well, I'm, do, I'm trying to do my best in this opera world and trying to find a uh, space in, in this big world of, the, of opera. And what does Aitana want to see change in the opera world? Well, I wish there was a few less of competitivity, to be honest. I wish also in the learning process of it, they, they would help us to, to deal with such things and guide us within the psychology of, of this whole industry, which is, it can be brutal. Being more understanding with each other and that... Honestly, that the issue with the family life and everything, because this is a very this is a solist career, so that it could be more understandable that people also want to make careers and families.
wanted to put one of my favourite questions to Rosetta. What do you think that we can do to make the opera world a better place? We needed to look at a new public. Uh, We needed to look at the opera as a form of art that uh, talk to the people, not a museal form of art, but that uh, speak in the ear of the people, that uh, make the people think, made the people be emotional, uh, make the people exit from the theater and still thinking about the, the, what they have seen. For me, this is the only way to carry on this beautiful heart that otherwise uh, the risk is to become a painting or a statue in a museum. I'm going to draw us on to our last question and I'm wondering, what do you think are the most important values we can pass on to the next generation of opera talent? Well, this is a difficult question. I think that what we need to pass to the new generation is that this job has to be filled of passion. Otherwise, it's too hard. The passion has to be the machine that guides the life of, a, of an artist. So passion, honesty and braveness and the boldness as well. (laughs) Thank you to all our guests from the Accademia Rossignana Alberto Zetta for joining us on Opera Vision and thank you to you for listening. There's plenty more online at operavision.eu where you can catch up with these very singers performing Il Viaggio a Rems. There are also masterclasses from Larry Brownlee and Thomas Hampson, Nombulelo Yende's award-winning performance at the Mnushko Vocal Competition, and an evening of operetta and zarzuela from the young artists at the Palau de les Arts. I'll link to all of those in the show notes and give information on all the other music you heard. Join us for the next episode on Thursday 1st of December as I welcome you to my operatic home, Oper Frankfurt. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do rate, review and subscribe to help other people to find us. This series is edited and produced by Karen Piri and curated and hosted by me, Nina Brazier. Our provision is co-funded by the European Commission. (laughs) 